Hello, welcome back. So today we will be, we're going to start a new chapter um, in this course, and that is the topic of multibody dynamics. Um, studying the dynamics of system of rigid bodies or system of uh, bodies. What we have done so far, we have looked at a system of particles and we use um, Newton or Lagrange equations to derive the equations of motion. We also looked at um, rigid bodies and mostly focused on a single rigid body. What we also looked at um, in, the, in the latest example that we had, um, a system of rigid bodies using Lagrange equations. And for the rest of this course, I'll just um, cover not how to derive the equations as we assume that um, somehow from what we have learned so far, we know the equations of motion for a system of bodies, what we can do with that. So that is the, the topic um, in the next few modules. So let's talk about some basic terminology in multibody dynamics. So let, let me show you a couple of examples. Um, maybe that's easiest if I have examples. So I have a 2D space, X and Y. I have a particle with mass M on their forces Fx and Fy. Another potential system I can look at is a Cartan pendulum system. That is my favorite. So I have this cart pendulum. This one maybe M2, this one M1. There is some force acting on the cart, maybe a torque how acting on the pendulum, this length is L. So we have already seen these systems and the equations of motion for these systems are relatively easy. So for the first one, it's very easy. So I have M X double dot equals F X and M Y double dot equals F Y where obviously this distance is X and that distance is Y. And for the other one, let's call this distance X and that angle theta as my generalized coordinates, for instance. So in this case, we have seen this before, the equation of motion are M1 plus M2, X double dot, plus m2 l cosine of theta theta double dot minus m2 l theta dot squared sine of theta equals f my force along x and m2 l squared theta double dot plus m2 l cosine of theta x double dot plus g, um, um, let's call it m2, m2 g l sine of theta equals this tau, oh, torque tau. And we can have all other kinds of um, dynamical system. Something to note here is the form of these equations what we can do is write any of these sets of um, equations. Doesn't have to be two sets of equations. It could be, I don't know, N equations. So what we can do is factor them in a matrix form. The first one is going to be something like this, times Q double, oh, not Q double dot, X double dot, and y double dot equals my forces, fx, fy. So I can write it in this um, 
matrix form. Similarly, the other um, system, I have M1 plus M2, M2 L cosine of theta, M2 L cosine of theta, M2 L squared, times your acceleration, which are x double dot and theta double dot, plus, uh -huh. let me separate two terms. Let's first have minus m2 l theta dot, theta dot square sine of theta is zero, plus, the gravity term that shows up in the second one, m2 l, m2 g l, m2 g l sine of theta equals my f and tau. So it doesn't matter what form I, if I have the equations of motion for any mechanical system, mechanical, multi-body mechanical system. I can always write them in something that looks like these uh, matrix form. And in always, I will have something, we call it mass matrix, that is multiplied by the vector of accelerations. Possibly we have a complex um, vector containing uh, positions and velocities, a function of that. I don't have a good name for it. Sometimes people use C, a C matrix, or let me put it as a vector. which is function of your velocities and accelerations. Uh, I might have some gravity terms, which is function of your positions. And again, in both cases, I have a vector of forces. So in when, when you have uh, any mechanical system, you can always write the equation of motion as some m times q double dot plus a very general function, which is function of q, q dot, possibly time. So all of these, we call it some f equals vector of your generalized forces. So this is the most general form of multi multi-body system dynamics. Can always write our equations in that way. And a few terminologies, this M, which is N by N, and here N is number of general uh, coordinates, coordinates, number of cues. This M is called the mass matrix. And something to note here um, in both of these, mass matrix is always symmetric. So always all ways symmetric and something that is not visible but it is true it's always positive definite to definite and this positive definite is the matrix version of that quantity being positive so in some sense mass is mass the compound mass of the system we are dealing with is always quote unquote positive. So that is the mass matrix. The next term is Q double dot. It's a vector of all 
accelerations of um, these generalized coordinates. So this is our acceleration vector f. All of these are vectors of same dimension. This one contains all, all effects that are not inertia. Uh, so that, that would be Coriolis acceleration, centri, how do we write that? Centripetal acceleration, stiffness, damping terms, gravity, effects of gravity, and so on. All, everything that is not uh, mass times acceleration goes into that. It can have any forms. And the last one, this Q, also NY1 is the vector of your generalized, generalized forces. So whenever you open a multi-body dynamic textbook or read a paper, you come across this form quite a lot. Um, almost always uh, systems are described in this form. Um, so this is, this form is, is the only thing you need in a case when you have something called minimal, mini, mini, mal set of generalized coordinates and that is th that means that you have the same number of generalized coordinates as your degrees of freedom remember the definition of degrees of freedom was the minimum number of variables you need to describe fully the how the system is configured and if you have the same number as your generalized coordinates Essentially, that's all you need. You don't have any redundant extra information. So in this case, your n equals n, which is number of degrees of freedom. This one is number of Qs or generalized coordinates. Often, um, not often, sometimes we, we opt to um, have more generalized coordinates than necessary. Sometimes we have to, in, in case of, for instance, non-holonomic constraints. Um, sometimes by force, sometimes by choice, we may have more, general, more generalized coordinates than the degrees of freedom. So if um, my n bigger than my number of degrees of freedom, more coordinates than degrees of freedom. If we have this condition, it means I'll have m equals n minus n con constraints. Constraints in the system. So let me maybe give an, another example what that means. For instance, look at a four bar mechanism like this. So this is a one degree of freedom system. If I only try to describe my system using a single generalized coordinate Q, so in this case, I have one degree of freedom, one generalized coordinate. So this is this formulation is unconstrained. So your your Q can take any 
any arbitrary value, given the, the mechanical limits of the system. How? Um, but in some case, we may want to, for whatever reason, our heart desires. It's the same system, but I write the equations using three coordinates. So my n is still the big n, number of degrees of freedom is the same, but I choose to have three coordinates. So in this case, my m, let me write, write it here. Here, m is one by one times q double dot equals um, q minus f. All of these are scalars. If you have more, you can more more coordinates. You can write still write the same form. Q double dot. Now three by one equals these vectors Q minus F. But now not all all of these Q values are um, independent. And they have to respect m equal two constraints. And constraints are algebraic um, equations. Often we use phi. So I will have a vector of two um, constraints, so two by one, that are possibly functions of Positions, velocities, and maybe time equals zero. So this is my constraint equation. Cons constraint equation. And maybe to, to, to make the example more concrete, you can assume or pretend all these three Qs are independent. So this is equal this system with three variables and constraints being active, you can think of it as, well, not equivalent. This is what we pretend. You have your, oh, no, this is not the angle. So this one is your Q1. You can assume your Q2 and Q3 are, can just take any value. You break, you break it from here. Oh no, not from there. Ugh. You break it from here. You leave the system to go free, but I know that these two points have to be the same. So that leads me to two constraint equations, L1, the length of each of these um, links, L1 cosine of Q1 plus L2 cosine of Q1 plus Q2 plus L3 cosine of one, two, three equals some distance D. And L1, S1 plus L2, S1, two plus L3, S1, two, three equals, I don't know, zero. Let's pretend they're in the same height. And these, these are my, my constraints, let me write them this way. Minus D equals zero and this one equals zero. So this is phi one and phi two. I have two constraint equations as a function of my now redundant generalized coordinates. So yeah. Okay, that is, I think, all I have for now. So we covered what is the general form of 
equations in a in a multi-body system, um, which is the only thing you need if you have minimal set of generalized coordinates. You don't have any um, redundant uh, variable, or if you do have redundant variables, you need to um, write a set of constraints to link them together. And did I mention it? I think I mentioned it. These are algebraic equations. All right, so that's all I have for now. A bit of terminology and um, your intro into multibody dynamics. In the next videos, we introduce some concepts that maybe you have seen already, but to be more formalized, we'll be talking about inverse and forward dynamic analysis. So until then.